I, I, I'm coming, I'm coming. If you hand over to government to maintain, the budget, the money, and share it. To, to live in that particular place that the house is, so it's supposed government will be compensate them so that I pay them and relocate them to where they are going and build another house for them. Careful engineering and management to meet human needs. Hello everyone, thanks for joining us on the program Property Doctor. Here we talk about the acquisition of properties, the maintenance and the management of properties generally. It is your right to be happy and to enjoy your buildings. It doesn't matter whether you are just a property owner or just a property user. You can connect with us on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube, like you're doing right now on Property Doctor NG and on Twitter at Property Doc NG. It is your right to be safe in your home. Today we'll be talking about how to secure our buildings. When we talk about securing our homes, we may look at this aspect in different ways. Securing our homes from what? That is the question you may ask. From external factors, from internal factors. It's quite broad. So when we talk about external factors, we are looking at securing your home from burglars, from vandals, from terrorists, and so on. Then on the internal factors, we are looking at securing our properties from maybe fire outbreak, indoor flooding, gas leakage, internal, you know, problems in the homes like people stealing inside the buildings and so on. But today we'll be looking at the external factors. We want to get tips on how to protect our homes and protect our families when we are at home. So we have an expert in the house that can give us tips on what to do. And his name is Prince Felix Yoba. He's the CEO of Sky High Global Security and Tech Limited. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. He's a security expert and the author of the book, security awareness handbook and this book was written in collaboration with alumni association of the national defense college that's the a a n d e c so a lot has been put into the book and it was launched some years back if you read this book you're going to get a lot of tips on the management of your homes by securing it and keeping it safe but let's get to the uh, program of today and um, sir what is the meaning of strategic security in our buildings you know we have different buildings we have homes schools hospitals we have different kinds of buildings but what is strategic security in our buildings yeah thank you for the question it's uh, only conventional here in Nigeria and most parts of Africa that the most people do is to get uh, cameras, CCTV cameras in place and they said, ah, it's okay, they've done, they've put security in place. But it goes beyond that. For it to be strategic, there must be a plan. And that plan includes that you first of all need to carry out a vulnerability assessment of your property so that you look at it. Where is my property situated? Is it situated near any place that could cause risks, either risks of insurgency or risks of theft? We are talking about bushes. We are talking about, let's say, a motor park. We are talking about banks. We are talking about other things that may attract, you know, some of the criminals. Yeah. And so if our property is located around places like that, then we will now come up with a strategy on how to put an integrated security system, you know, in place. Okay. So um, what you're saying now is that um, when you want to build a house, you should have a plan first. Certainly. For the security. Now, who, who can uh, produce that um, security plan for us? Yeah, thank you very much. You are always advised to 
see, you know, an expert in any aspect of our life. If you are sick, sure you need to see a doctor, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, if you do self-medication, you're on your own. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> so you definitely need to see a doctor. He's trained. He's an yeah. expert. Okay. There are security experts. And those security experts are the only ones who will be able to carry out this vulnerability analysis. They are the only ones who can design a security plan of your building. When the architect is doing his, his own work, where you talk about the mechanical, the electrical, and other part, structural parts of the building. Yeah. So the security part component should also come into that design so that from the uh, beginning of the construction, you know, work, all the security, you know, uh, cabling, and all the other necessary things will have to come in place yeah. so that it will be put in, in a conduit form instead of wires to be flying all over the place for aesthetics and also, you know, for security. Okay, so yeah. it's good we have a security plan. What if maybe you just rented an apartment and um, possibly there was no security plan for you or security plan in place in that particular apartment? What yeah. would you do? Most, most houses in Nigeria are like that. <laughs> because people build houses, it might shock you, you know, that somebody will spend 50 million, 100 million, 200 million in put building a house and no single security feature. All they will do is to, you know, procure the services of a gate man, not even a security person, a gate man who will stand there, open gate and close gate, and then that's their security. Wow. That's very dangerous. Is there any government policy for maybe like when you want to get approval for your building? Is there any government policy that can say you need to have a security design attached to all your building plans? Do you, do you have anything like I've that? I've actually not come across any. I've actually not come across any at all. And I feel uh, at this juncture, we may have to employ the government to look into that area. Because uh, insecurity is, is here with us. Yeah. And it's going to be here for a while from the way we are looking at it. And so it should be important for government to put some policies, regulations, mm -hmm. that will help in putting security in place, either in our public buildings or uh, at private our homes, build private, yes, buildings. private buildings. So it's, it's very important because if you say there should be a minimum standard of, let's say, put a CCTV and some level of access control for your homes, and then you now say for the public buildings, go beyond that, put, you know, standard fence, put, you know, a standard security uh, system in place so mm -hmm. that you can check, you know, prevent, you know, yeah. deter uh, thieves, any form of uh, crime from that particular building. Or intruders. Or intruders, you know, generally. So if they put all of this in place, it will help. It will go a long, long way to reduce vulnerability to crime and criminalities. Okay, now let's look at um, bringing it down to our homes. Can you tell us briefly what kind of security that we can put in place in our homes? When you have watched that video, that short clip we just played now, and we saw um, somebody passing through the burglar proof into the building, what kind of security can you advise our viewers to have in place in their homes it's, it's actually so sad to see that things like this are, you know happening like we say uh, crime is increasing in additional dimensions the multi-dimensional crime you know rates yeah. and so we also need to you know espouse other approaches that we can use to uh, you know, mitigate to see how we can stop or reduce vulnerability to these uh, criminal activities. And so, um, basically, like we said, the procedure, by the time you have done your security drawing, your security drawing will take care of the interior and also the exterior. And so, the first thing you are looking at to protect your home is to put a good fence, the right perimeter. And then on that fence, you may have, you know, a security intrusion 
system, security intrusion system check. It could be a normal, you know, security burglary uh, intrusion detection system, mm -hmm. or it could be infrared, you know, detection system, so that you can, you know, keep away those criminals who want to pass through unauthorized places into the building. Yeah. So you can only have the right, you know, access to the building. And so you also have to put a very strong door, a strong gate. Yeah. When you have a strong gate, if you uh, can go further, you can put other security features on the gate. There are flashlights you can put that can video. At the same time, it can also record activities in and out of your building. building. Uh, if you wish, those who can keep dogs can also put dogs. They also serve as deterrents. And if you can also get security personnel, well-trained security personnel. Some people just get one young man from somewhere and put you know, him by the gate. And with a, a 50 naira, 50,000 uh, 50, naira, even it's too much. We give unnecessary information yeah. you know, to uh, criminals who can use that to perpetrate nefarious activities against uh, the homes. Okay. So we, we have that, you, when you have that in place, and then to the main building, you now come to where you have to put proper access control, the right kind of doors, the right kind of window, then the right kind of burglary alarm you know, systems, and then some other forms of you know, security. And then when you, put, when you finish with that, you put your surveillance system, that's your CCTV. When you put your CCTV, there are places where, you know, as experts, we can integrate the, the perimeter fence intrusion detection with the CCTV. Mm -hmm. So the moment there is an intruder and the alarm comes up, then eventually you can see your, your CCTV adjust to that location so you can see exactly where the uh, intruder is coming, coming from. from. So whatever you want to do, you can do. And beyond that, sometimes if they study your system well, they can interrupt your network. When I mean your network, your CCTV, and all of that. So it's also good to have other background, what we call covered security cameras and systems. They can come in form of anything. They okay. can come in form of anything. Okay, like uh, this one that we have here. Yes. Like um, this clock. Definitely. This the clock. Camera. Here, yeah, this clock you're seeing as an inbuilt camera. You know, this inbuilt camera works audio, video. So you can hear the conversation. You can also, you know, watch whatever that is, you know, uh, that transpired. You can use it to check your codes. You can even use it to check your security. They won't know it's working like normal time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it comes a whole lot. Water sprinkler, so many things that will not be suspicious. So when the criminals think that they have cut you off, cut your system off, oh, totally. and they will operate freely, they wouldn't know that there are other devices oh, that, that is capturing what is going on. And then from the footage, you could, uh, you one can uh, be able to trace them and then trap them. Okay. But it's better we put, you know, those secure the crime to take place first. That means we are being proactive than waiting for it to respond. Okay. It could be what kind of bug have in place in our buildings and at the same time remain. Steel. I'm mentioning the end. Solid steel. No one father father something that they use their boots on one hand and <laughs> they just throw it to one side. Yeah. But when you are doing the construction, construct it and, you know, it can be lockable. It can be locked, you know, can be locked. And the key must be kept where every member of the family will have access to. Okay. And then you are supposed to do uh, drills, you know, some security drills, some bit of exposure and training, yes, to the home and the home. Even security drills with your children at home? Definitely. Very okay. definitely. You can when to open, if a visitor is coming, what do you do? Off your inner light before you, you know, check the person outside. Yeah. You know, basic, you know, tips, basic security tips must be, you know, rehearsed. In case an emergency fire or anything, and you're not able to escape, you know, okay, you have an access on one of those uh, bug, uh, uh, and then if uh, it's not, uh, you know, you can all of those, information are very, very necessary for the family 
you know, to rehearse from time to time. Okay. Do you want us to talk about the uh, internal a little bit? No, I think we should um, put that for the next episode. Let's not just okay. bombard them with so many tips today. Okay. And um, via the our guest in the house, Prince Yoba, has written this book on security. I read a part of this book and I got a lot of tips on security awareness. It's important you get this book. You can get it from your bookstore or you can call if you want to get more details, especially on what he is talking about. There's still a lot he is going to tell us about concerning security. And we hope to see you maybe in our next episode where we'll have him telling us details on the kinds of security gadgets to use in our homes, something that will not even be noticeable, but at the same thing is working and is giving you the right information that you need. Yeah, most times at our homes, we, uh, we usually will not give attention to the people we bring to our homes to handle, to manage our homes, and it's uh, very, very important. What kind of security personnel do you have at your home right now? You think about it, look back. Who is your security man? Is that same security man that you sent to the bank? Is that same security man you sent to Madame's room and all of that? What about house helps, those who are coming to assist? Do you carry out any background check to ensure that you're not bringing a thief to your home or somebody will give unauthorized access to your home? What about the drivers? Are the drivers conducted in a manner and way that they don't have, you know, often have access to your home, especially your rooms? Sometimes, I'm sorry to say, the madams go to the extent of exposing these drivers and other people who are not supposed to enter some unauthorized, authorized places. They allow them to enter. And before you know, they perpetrate serious you know, wreck serious havoc on families. So it's, please, it's very important that if you're bringing in anybody, even those who want to come out and carry out repairs, please use a company. Don't pick people from the road and take them to your houses to do repairs because it might be dangerous. If you take someone from a company, it might cost you a little more, but in case of anything, you know who to reach out to. If you carry out all of these exercises, it will also help you to keep you safe at your homes. Sir, please can you give us one last word for today? Let's do well to secure our homes. Yes, I agree. Security is not cheap. But then, just like health is not also cheap, but because we want to stay alive, we want to be healthy, we want to take it as an important part of our construction to include security. Security from the designs to implementation of putting the right cameras in the right places, the right access controls in the right places, the right security personnel to mount, you know, this system so that we can, you know, be secure from criminal, uh, uh, you know, activities. Yep. And it will go a long way to reduce vulnerability. Please, let us not say they can never come to us. Or let us not just uh, be complacent and believing that in the midst of all of this insecurity, we will not be hurt at all. God will continue to protect us, but then we need to do as much as we can to secure our homes. All right. Thank you very much, sir. Thank and you. thank you, viewers, for being with us on today's episode of Property Doctor. I hope you have learned something today. And if you are still watching, that means you enjoyed this program. Don't forget to click the like button. And also subscribe by clicking the subscribe button and the alert button so that you get notification whenever any new episode comes up. We hope to see you same time next week with another interesting episode of Property Doctor. Until then, remain blessed and bye. I'm coming, I'm coming. If you hand over to government to maintain, the budget, the money, and share it. To, to live in that particular place that the house is, 
So it's supposed government to will compensate them so that and pay them and relocate them to where they are going and build another house for them. Careful engineering and management to meet human needs.